I'm Rachel Goldsworthy and welcome to the drive home to Hawkesbury, where I believe every home has a story and I love sharing those stories on real estate in the Hawkesbury with you. Here we share the best ways to add value to your property, how to avoid the common mistakes people make when buying and selling property, and how to get the maximum return on your investment with a focus on supporting local business. I live, love Hawkesbury and can't wait to get into today's episode with you, so let's get started. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on what time you're watching this episode of The Drive Home to Hawkesbury. I'm Rachel Goldsworthy, and I am lucky enough to be joined by the Mayor of Hawkesbury City Council, Madam Mayor. How are you today? I'm well, thank you, Rachel. How are you today? Really good. I was lucky enough to meet you at one of the community events and one of the council uh, meetings that was had, and I suppose that's an everyday occurrence for the Mayor, going to and from meetings and meeting a lot of people in the area. Yes, I'm sure that the Mayor would be very busy. Sometimes we have technical difficulties and sometimes it's difficult for people to hear, but it's great that everybody's on the line and everybody's looking, um, saying hello. We've got quite a few viewers and quite a few thumbs up. So thank you for everybody for joining us. What's it like in the day of a Mayor? Uh, it varies quite significantly. It can be a really jam-packed day with lots of meetings, including council meetings or briefings, or it can be a day out in the community, or, or it can just be a day in the office where I'm catching up on things. Yeah, terrific. And you've got your finger in so many pies for so many people and looking after the community and doing a great job. How do you manage it all, Madam Mayor? Sorry, Rachel, I missed that. That's okay. I was just saying that you have your finger in many pies for the community. You're looking after so many people. You do so much for, you know, you're a great community advocate. How do you manage it all? Uh, well, it's just a matter of balancing like it is for any job, I guess. It's balancing your time and working out priorities. There's a number of things I have to do which are options which obviously I can't change. But in terms of how I get around the community and what I do, it's reasonably flexible and I can share my time around quite well. And no, also, of course, balance, balance my family and home life as well. Yes, and obviously you've got a family behind the mayor. What's what do they think of you being the mayor, and how do they fit into it all? I mean, obviously what do they they're think of it. Oh, well, they're very <laughs> proud of me, of course. Yes, doing community work for a long time, so my children were used to it, and um, yeah, my husband's very supportive, so I'm very lucky. No, it's terrific, isn't it? And it's so nice that you have that family unit there to support you and it's so important in what we all do. And I think it's a great thing that um, they're super proud of you, as as is everybody in the community, that you're the mayor for us and you're doing such a great job out there. Thank you. So thank you. Yeah, we appreciate it. Um, talking about mayoral duties, sometimes you, you have to deliver news that is not so great and uh, one of them is probably on the, the hot topic list for us in regards to IPART and the rate increase. Um, can you share a little bit about that, the insight, the 9.5% increase that we're going to be feeling over the next couple of years and um, how that will impact for the residents? I didn't quite hear your question, Rachel, but I did hear you say something about the SRV, so I'll just uh, run through that a bit. Uh, it is something which will, of course, impact on households. We're aware of that, as do all the other cost of living pressures that are occurring at the moment. However, uh, we have a fully costed comprehensive works program, and we really have to uh, get these work upgrade our roads so they're safer. Uh, we have our major complaint is, of course, about roads, so we need to fix the roads. And if we weren't to introduce this, we would have no improvements at all. And in fact, we may have to actually reduce services and make cuts to services. Because we had such a large consultation period uh, with the community and the community mm -hmm. don't want service cut, and they certainly want to see improvements. So we have various policies in place which can assist people who may face hardships or who may uh, want to have some sort of alternate payment plan. But mm. uh, we are determined to deliver on this. It's not a matter of just asking people for more money. We're not too sure whether we've lost you there, but um, you're halfway through talking about the 
the rates and how it's going to impact the local residents and that it is a, a difficult thing for the local residents to feel but certainly the um, it's a necessary thing that you are bringing in and uh, now you've joined us back again and you can finish off what you're saying Madam Mayor I'm sorry technology lost us there for a bit so you were saying in regards to the impact is great however it's a necessary um, thing to bring in the IPART. Yes, it, it is a necessary thing, which is unfortunate, but for many years there's been um, a backlog of infrastructure uh, maintenance that hasn't been done and we simply have to fix it because we have to have our roads in good condition for the future and we have to make them safer for our people. So uh, I'm sorry, I've got a technician in the room now who's doing something. Um, so... Um, Thank you to the households. Tech. Households are stretched already, and uh, we're quite aware of that. Mm, yeah, it is difficult, and I think too with a um, an older population in some of the areas of Hawkesbury, it is more difficult for them. They have the asset of a home. The value of that asset is increasing, therefore the value of the rates are increasing with the value of general coming out with increasing values of their properties, which in turn affects the amount of money that they pay for their rates. So it, it is good that you are sympathetic to that and, and listening to what's going on in the community, but also I think it's equally important that the roads are being improved because I know myself um, driving along roads I, I've done rims on particular cars and they're four-wheel drives and you know $250 for a tyre or a rim or what have you, it's expensive so it's great that you're doing the roads and I know that the locals will love that. Yes I think it's essential that we we have to deal with any longer so yes we've got to we have to we have to do what needs to be done. Yes, and I noticed in, um, you know, the investing in your future, um, some of the rate variations which have been funded. Is it okay if I put a link of this up online for people to get an idea as to the money that's being yeah. spent? Because it's being well spent yes. in different areas, anywhere from, you know, um, $1,500 right through to half a million dollars on different road structures, anywhere from Glossodia, North Richmond, Richmond, South Windsor, St Albans, Tennyson, Wilberforce. Yes, Windsor. it is across the entire Hawkesbury. Mm, yeah, so it makes a big difference. And, um, you know, also in regards to the other things that you're doing, it's another sheet that I will put up online for people to have a look at. Um, lots of different areas where you focus in. It's not just about the roads. You're looking at business improvement, the volunteering community development, public domain and park and maintenance. Um, yes, so many different some I do apologise for, for if I'm cutting in on you. I, I'm only part hearing your question, so um, I'm sorry. Maybe, maybe it should be going to some sort of technological upgrade. I'm not sure. Um, <laughs> but I apologise for that. It is very it is being spent across uh, the entire Hawkesbury area, which is good. So uh, we've tried to ensure that the priorities in each area for people are being still be ongoing works. But part of doing this is to enable us to be in a position where we can actually continue uh, to deliver more positively because we have the rationale behind it. Yes, yeah, and it's good to have the, the positive comments coming through. We've got somebody saying, love our Mayor, and there's a lot of people that um, are supporters of you, Madam Mayor, and they feel that you're doing a great job, so keep up the good work. Um, there's a couple of other things too, which I've noticed certainly since you've been um, in in as mayor that there's been a lot of community events and a lot more things being you know involving the community and one such that's coming up on the 29th of july i believe down at government park which is such a great location for things to be held um tell me a little bit about that what is um hawkesbury fest all about and and how can people get in touch with people to be involved uh, well, I think Hawkesbury Fest is uh, going to be a celebration of local government week, which we'll be holding a, a family event down at Governor Philip Park, as you say. It's a fantastic venue for that sort of thing. And uh, there'll be various things. I've got a list here of what will actually be going on. Uh, it's a new free community event. 
and we'll have all our various services there to tell people what we do. So we'll have, for example, our nursery, which will be giving away a thousand plants on the day. If you need some more plants, come along uh, mm -hmm. and we'll be planting a tree to celebrate National Tree Day. We'll have representatives from our animal shelter there hosting dog competitions and promoting animals available for adoption. Uh, we'll be opening, I believe, our new park, I think. Uh, so we've just had a new uh, park, including a uh, splash park uh, installed down at Governor Phillip Park. So that will be opening. We'll have people from our library, gallery and museum. And uh, we'll have all free activities for the children, like jumping castles, face painting and roving entertainment, which sounds exciting. And as well as that, we'll have a sheepdog and agility display, which I always love dog display and community groups and so on will also be showcasing their groups and hosting um, a sausage sizzle. So it should be a wonderful day and you're quite right to be alongside our beautiful river is always a really good opportunity for the community to get together and enjoy that. I think so and you've had some great events down at Governor, pa Governor Park and um, oh good the technology we're getting plugged in here which is uh, even better so you'll be able to hear the questions a little bit easier so that's fantastic thank you mr technical or mrs technical whoever's helping out <laughs> makes it a little bit easier no um government park is such a great location for those of you that don't know it's at the the northern end um, of windsor area and it's got a great boat ramp and you've got a lovely park parkland area for the kids to play plenty of parking, very accessible. You can walk into town into the great cafes and shops and the galleries and the, the museums and, um, you know, the local pubs and eateries. So uh, really good location. And I think it's a good symbiotic relationship between the two. It's good to bring more business into the area and good for the local shops. What's the um, the feeling like for the, the people in the area that you're, you know, what's the feedback from you in regards to the local community at the moment? What are you speaking to people about? What are their main concerns and what are their challenges, Madam Mayor? Uh, well, that's quite varied at the moment because uh, people have many different challenges, as you could appreciate. Uh, we have the various big state issues which are impacting people, such as the corridors and things like that. We have the general pressures people face, such as the cost of living pressures and so on. We've got a lot of people who are keen to see what we're going to do with revitalising our towns, as we've just recently, as you probably know, uh, finished a place score survey, and mm. we've got lots of plans unfolding to to, uh, you know, try and really boost our townships, uh, clean them up, install some more exciting things within our towns, as well as several uh, new programs that we've got going on. So uh, when I'm out and about speaking to people, they very, very could be. I'm not too sure whether anybody else is experiencing the technical to do difficulty. With planning. There we go. Yeah. Got you back again. So you, you, you to do with the planning, and you're looking after different things within the community to increase and boost the the infrastructure and the assistance with the local businesses. Is that right? That's correct. Yes. Yeah. No, that's yeah, terrific. Exactly. It's good to have that. Now it's a very hot topic at the moment, um, and I was speaking to Councillor Richards in regards to the corridor. There's 192 kilometres of of corridor that has proposed the submissions have now closed i believe for the first of june what was the feedback in regards to that madam mayor and was there any you know discussion around that what was the the feedback from the community and also um you know in regards to the acquisition process that's another question the two hundred thousand dollar da cap can you share with the people listening as to what the feeling is out there and what you feel is going to happen with that corridor Yes, well, the corridor announcement, there's no doubt, and I think the government would probably acknowledge that it was not done well at all. It was quite um, mm. unacceptable to have caused that level of distress amongst the community, and, and that was the feedback and the immediate feedback we got from people who were simply approached one day to say their land may be acquired for a corridor. Mm. And uh, so it's evolved from there. There's been uh, a bit of ambiguity surrounding it because last night, there was a news item uh, saying various things would happen and that the issue would go to Cabinet on Thursday. Uh, Council did actually have an extension for our submission, uh, which um, uh, 
is going in after the 13th of June where we'll uh, discuss it at our council meeting. So yes. um, I think one of the main issues has been the level of uncertainty connected to it. Mm. And you and can understand that. Yeah, you can understand that, you know, worry and anxiety around a house that's been there, the family's had the, the farm or the pr property for 100 years and, and then they're just being told, well, we're just going to take this back because we need to put a corridor through here. So, uh, you know, I, I feel for the people that have their homes that are in that corridor, proposed corridor, but it's great that, as you said, it, they're acknowledging that it wasn't done correctly and they are allowing the submissions to be put forward to the 1st of June and I know that you've supported people with their submissions. I know Councillor Richards has supported people with their submissions, as I'm sure, you know, the full kit of councillors would have been there and the, the local community, just helping one another to understand the process and also, you know, f form the information required and have the meetings, the local meetings, to bring an awareness to the subject. Yeah, no, I think it's uh, really important. So um, in regards to community consultation, obviously, people are listening, which is great. And as a result of that, you've got your first town meeting coming up tomorrow, I believe. That's rather exciting for you. Yes, we do. We have our first town meeting. I've got a list of all of them. Our first one is in Windsor, of course. It's the launch of our, our new town meetings. That's on the 6th of June at 6pm at the Hawkesbury Regional Gallery, which is a lovely opportunity to showcase our beautiful gallery uh, to the public as well. And then they're in various other towns. You can find all the dates and times on our website or our council Facebook page, as well as individual councillors will probably have those on their pages as well. So we're crossing the entire Hawkesbury and we really welcome people either to send in their questions by video or by um, email. There's a special email address and uh, they can send those in and we'll be answering those and we'll be telling the public more about what to expect from the SRV program of works and also to update generally on what Yes, no, I think um, it's really important to have those town meetings because obviously everybody's listened and learned from what happened or what didn't happen with the corridor. And it is important that people get their opportunity to say what they need to so that, you know, councillors and mayors like yourself get an understanding of where the constituents are sitting, what their thought patterns are, where where their you know, allegiances lie and what their passion is in the community. So I think um, it's great that you're doing that and it's so good that it's gonna be locally in Windsor. That's so important, so important, Rachel, that we do that because that's the only way that we really know. We're here to represent the community. So they have to give us the feedback on what they want to see happen and how they want to see that happen. So we've done a lot of consultation over the last two years already, and this will be furthering on from that. So we really, really welcome, you know, constructive criticism on things that we're doing. We like input, suggestions, ideas. We love all of that. And, and of course, it's all of our community. It's not just for the councillors to be deciding. So we really have to be channeling what people uh, want to see happen in the future. Exactly. And as, as you said, you know, it's not a matter of, you know, um, one person making a decision or a collective making a decision. It's everybody that needs to make that decision. And I think we all need to put not our toe in the water. We need to jump into that, that lake together, jump into the river together and, and make a stand for what's important to us all. Because if we don't talk to Absolutely. people like yourself, you're not going to know what, what you want, what we want. So... Exactly. It's it's really important and, and we all need to work together because we need to uh, be able to identify what we want to protect, what we see the Hawkesbury being in the future. As we've got a very, very large growing city on our doorstep, we have to really define how we want to go in the future and how we want that to be. Yes, that's right. And it doesn't what it doesn't matter what political party that you, you belong to or what position that you hold, as you say, it's a matter of involvement, everybody working together cohesively to get that great result for the community. Now, talking about the future, uh, Madam Mayor, where do you see the future of the Hawkesbury and with vertical living, um, any sort of new developments that are coming on that may make a difference to the area in general? What's your thoughts on the future for the Hawkesbury? 
Well, for the future, I'd be really keen, first of all, to see a lot of uh, our efforts dedicated to generating more employment opportunities out here, firstly, because we have so many people who have to make long commutes every day and work out of the area. We really mm. need to capitalise on the opportunities we can generate in that regard. That's one aspect of it, and we're working on, on strategies to do that. Uh, mm. The other thing is, of course, we are currently preparing a land strategy, so that will be identifying where various sorts of development and a housing strategy uh, as to what sorts of things. So you mentioned uh, vertical living. Uh, I would envisage there would be some uh, denser development within the city areas where it can be sustained. But of course, we in the Hawkesbury have some limitations that other areas don't have. We have height limits due to the RAF based presence. And we also yes. have a floodplain, we have bushfire zones, we have a lot of national park. We've got quite a few constraints on the level of development that we can have and uh, future development I would like to see uh, being quite sustainable and being really good solid development for the future not just uh, anything ad hoc anywhere I think we need we have an opportunity now to really plan for the future uh, we're on the fringe of the city we need to retain some buffer zones we are the food producing area we're the lungs of the city we need to really stamp our identity in that regard and ensure that whereas we will have growth that we have growth that is sustainable and manageable and mm. we also have issues with with the flood uh, you know, our potential for flooding and bushfire is quite extreme. So we also need to encompass all of that planning into our overall planning. Yeah, it's a, some real valid points there because I think a lot of people don't realise that those three, it's a triangle really, isn't it, with what's going on in and around the area. Um, Toowoomba with their floods, they had major changes that were made. I know that uh, you're very aware of that and working towards those sorts of plans, which is terrific. But um, it's important, as you say, to have the employment opportunities and have the businesses that can support those employment opportunities within the area because we have such a great spot. I mean, I don't want to tell too many people about it because, you know, they'll, <laughs> it's just such a great secret that we've all, you know, had for such a long time. But, uh, you know, this beautiful, you can walk down to the river within 250 metres of our office. We're right there. And you can, you know, swim in the water if you want to. You can take your boat out for a run. You can go for a ski, you can go for a walk with the dog, you can walk in the national park, you can take your bike for a ride along the bikeways, um, you can go to some of the, the national, you know, the, the gallery, the, the museums, um, cafes, businesses. Like how lucky are we to be living here, Madam Mayor? We're so lucky and we also have so much un untapped potential uh, to be able to capitalise on all of these natural attributes that we have. So many of those things are coming through in our town centres working group and our tourism groups and so on. We've just got to actually tie it all together and uh, tie it all in with the strategic planning, which is something that the state government has uh, wanted us to get all our strategic planning in order. So that's what we're working on and hopefully uh, that won't be too much longer before we've completed all of that yeah no that's great look we've got people saying hello to you we've got Catherine saying hello to you we've got Sarah uh, Rose is giving you a shout out Deborah Jennifer Janine Dima Hendra Kim Danielle I'm sorry for all the people that I can't say hello to there's so many of them wanted to be online is anybody have any <laughs> hello to everybody online we really appreciate everybody joining us it might become a regular or irregular thing but um, I know you know there has been some questions over the time if anybody's got any questions before we finish up today um, please ask them um, we'll see if we've got any questions that come through but um, it's been terrific to speak to you and I think too people don't realise that, you know, me as a real estate agent, you as the mayor, we do have lives outside of what we do every day, but um, it's great that we can be involved with our community. But, uh, you know, your daughter just graduated recently too, didn't she, from university, is that right? Sorry, I, I didn't just... hear that last bit. My daughter just graduated. Yes, she yeah, did. very exciting <laughs> time for the family. Yes, that's my youngest. Of years. It's my youngest daughter and, and um, the last one, you know, she's still at uni because she's still completing a master's, but um, she, uh, yes, all, all three of my children are, are now all qualified and so on, which is somewhat of a relief, I guess, but it's a wonderful thing that... that um, <laughs> which, 
Which brings us 180 to, or 360 to yourself. I mean, they're probably super proud of you. You were saying that they were super proud of you, um, you know, originally, but now you're super proud of them for, for achieving what they've done. And uh, it's good to have that family unit, as I was saying before. Um, I know, just one question from somebody that's come through. Um, what's at the top of your list as mayor? What's the most important thing to you as mayor? And I'm sure that there's probably many things that there are, but... Uh, that's the question that we've had there. Oh, sorry, I didn't. I didn't hear it. I'm sorry. Okay. As uh, as the mayor, what's the most important thing you feel is um, is on the top of your list? I'm I'm really sorry, Rachel. It keeps freezing, and I just heard something on the top of my list. Uh, yes, on, on, on the top. Of, uh, yes, so on the top of your list. Uh, what is uh, <laughs> as mayor? As the mayor, what is your priority? What is your number one what in your day? Uh, Oh, number one in my day, every yes. day, uh, to be committed to what I have promised the community I will do, which is to work for the betterment of this community and to truly represent uh, what I believe is the best and to try and have our council work together to really deliver what we've all promised uh, to the people, even though there may be differences. There's, without a doubt, all 12 councillors are committed to making the Hawkesbury a better place and I'm proud to lead people in doing that and I hope that that's what we're Yeah, no, I think you guys are doing a great job, all 12 councillors. I really appreciate it. And as you say, whether people agree or don't agree, it doesn't matter what stand you have. As long as we come together at the end with the, the real community issues that matter to people and make a difference in everybody's lives, I think that that's a great thing. Now, if people had questions in regards to the Hawkesbury or the council or anything else, how would they get in contact with you, Madam Mayor? Uh, well, they can either email me at mayor at hawkesbury.newsouthwales.gov.au. I have a Facebook page. The council has a Facebook page. They can call me. My numbers and contact details are on the council website. And I'm happy to take questions and have conversations uh, with anybody about anything. Uh, if they want to make an appointment, they can ring the council and they can book an appointment to come and see me as well. No, that's great. And that's what we love about the Mayor. She is always accessible and contactable and, um, you know, easy to be able to speak to as I have done today. And I, I really appreciate the opportunity. I will put up some links for people so that they get, if they do want to get in contact or they've got some questions in regards to the things coming up or the town meeting tomorrow night, don't forget you might get your opportunity to meet the Madam Mayor there or alternatively um, you know, email email the, the pet or any of the, the questions that you have. And uh, once again, I really appreciate the opportunity to have you on the drive home to Hawkesbury today, Madam Mayor. Thank and, you for uh, having me, Rachel. And I, apolog I apologise if I've given disjointed answers, but I haven't heard all your questions you you just freezing in front of me but i i hope i answered most of them so thank you for having me i look forward to coming back yeah no that's fantastic and as uh, the Ma madam mayor said we do have some technical issues from time to time and both of us can freeze so we're both working with that it is a live show there aren't any edits so well done for um, you know, hanging in there and um, whilst the, the face is frozen as we're talking to one another, we still got there in the end, I think, and everybody's giving uh, the thumbs up and lots of hearts and uh, likes. If anybody's got any questions, don't hesitate to contact myself, Rachel Goldsworthy at rachelgoldsworthy.com.au. You can find me at my Facebook page and uh, also I'll put the links up for Madam Mayor and we will catch up with you on the next episode. We really appreciate your time, Madam Mayor. Thank you and goodbye to everybody. Thanks, Rachel. Have a lovely day. Bye, everyone. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking time out listening to today's episode. If you have any questions on the process of buying, selling, leasing or strata management, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Be sure to subscribe on iTunes and I'd really appreciate it if you could spread the word by liking and sharing this episode with your family and friends. I'm Rachel Goldsworthy and I look forward to catching up with you on the next episode of The Drive Home to Hawkesbury.